101 in terms of global competitiveness amongst 125 countries. One of the key indices that pull us downwards in the overall global competitiveness is the business cost of private employers, where we are 119 in 125 countries. At the very outset, a notion that we want to actually give up the project is that most of our private sector would come to us and say that our global competitiveness gets depressed because of the poor existence of infrastructure. They may be true to some extent, but that's not the binding constraint. Infrastructure in Pakistan is not in the binding constraint if you compare it in terms of the economies. If you look at the overall infrastructure quality, you will see that Pakistan ranks almost in line with China and India in terms of overall infrastructure score, where one represents an underdeveloped economy and seven represents an extensive and efficient world best. I'm not saying that we are even near to the world best, but all that we're saying is we have very similar to Asian economies which have been doing very well with the existing infrastructure. If I had to break this infrastructure score down to, for example, first, the transport infrastructure, you see Pakistan doing well in case of rail and road. They will be ranking better than Indonesia and Thailand. In road infrastructure, we are ranking better than Indonesia again. In air, air transport, we are ranking much better than China, actually, and very much in line with India and Indonesia. In terms of financial market sophistication, ease of access to credit, in both the indices, we rank better than China. Where we give it away is actually what we call the software of economic growth. What I just showed you was hardware of economic growth. In terms of the software, we first see the technology readiness in which the firm level technology absorption and the technology transfer have not done that well. And this is the we are talking about. Similarly, another indicator of software of economic growth would be intensity of global competition and effectiveness of anti-monopoly policy. In both cases, we are ranking very poorly. Similarly, in case of governance, another indicator of software of economic growth, judicial independence, property rights, corruption. This is where we give it away essentially. So if I had to check this, what constrains Pakistan's growth, I would start by two things. Market failure and suburban failure. The market failure would be defined as the lack of competitive and innovative markets. And governance failure would be a situation where your contracts do not get enforced, or there's no contract enforcement. There's distorted tax and subsidies. There's lack of proper financial stimulation, so on and so forth. Finally, something that prospects all the constraining factors of mining is that we don't have enough growth software, we lack human capital and good management practices. When it comes to the average productivity of labor, for example, which we'll show you in our data presentations, the productivity of labor may not be the mining factor when it comes to especially the victim of human capital. It is the same labor that works here and has a low productivity, it is the same labor that goes to Dubai and has a higher productivity. That may not be a mining factor. It may be a management of the managerial practices. Now, what may be a new development approach? I say maybe because we are open to consultation and feedback. And certainly, this is where we go. Uh, feedback will be very crucial for us. If you look at the red boxes, this is where the whole process of economic growth goes. The size of public investments. And our focus on low tax technical skills. We're not saying now that these are unimportant. We just think that these need to be complemented by number one market reforms, which provide you an enabling environment to work with your investment. And number two, a steady reform for injecting productivity whereby you have incentives for innovation and entrepreneurship. 
And we focus particularly as we go ahead on youth entrepreneurship. So if I can distinguish what is distinct in the new development approach, I will just provide six main distinguishing features. Number one, what we are saying is that we want to focus now a bit on the hardware approach and more towards a focus on software economic growth, where we need to learn from the global experiences, generate sustained productivity and efficiency by emphasizing on the quality of investment in physical and human capital. We are also saying that productivity should be measured in both public and private sector. Second, we are saying that we need to move away from the dominant role of public investment and towards well-functioning markets that can act as ends of service. And when we're talking about the market-based regime, we want to start by actually focusing on the rule of law where you start from deregulation, where government should not be involved in markets except to regulate this behavior. Third, competitiveness today has been treated more as a resource factor. We now want to see competitiveness in dodgers. So by minimizing government intervention, making productivity in dodgers, we'll be able to look beyond factory accumulation, beyond the accumulation of labor and capital, so that we can accelerate growth and improve risk and risk reserves. We also need to move away from the distorting role of incentives and towards incentives for innovation and entrepreneurship incentives for R&D, the enabling environment should 